Now we're used to talking about biotech development in terms of long lead times, 10 years or more, but yeah. your business model is a shorter, sharper one. Well, the long term is composed of a lot of short terms all put together, and we're just trying to use the short term to actually make a return on your investment. It's a different model. We want to just do very specific projects where we know what we're doing when we go in, we know roughly how long it's going to take us, about three months or so to come out in terms of cash. We want to know what we're doing precisely and who we're going to sell our ideas to at the end. And you tend to work back from what the market needs rather than working from the bottom up, as it were, from what the researchers are doing. My ideal project is to have a buyer come to me and say, make this project for me. Because then I know what the end has to be and then I can go back and plan how to actually do it, deliver it. So give me the buyer first, <laughs> then I'll make the project for it. It's a global market, biotech. You're listed in Frankfurt, but you tap into the intellectual reserves in India in the course of your research. How promising is India as a source of bright young researchers? Biotech knows no boundaries. It's all just intellectual. Uh, India has got a large volume of high quality research and science and it's a big market as well. We tap into India, we tap into China, we tap into America, we tap into Europe, we tap into anywhere where there's good science. Don't mind what the source is. Where does Farsight source most of its ideas, most of its prospects for development? Individuals, universities, um, other biotech companies that have run into trouble. Um, usually companies and places where they've been working on something and then they've hit a brick wall, either financial or personnel-wise, and then we come in and rescue them. What are the best sectors, the best kinds of products for biotech companies to be in at the moment? Ones that make money. <laughs> Um, it follows fashion, uh, often as not. Some years it's diagnostics, other years it's therapeutics, other years it's uh, medical devices. At the moment, the whole of the research area is under pressure, mainly because of government down-funding universities. Universities are looking for sources of cash. Um, a lot of biotech companies are finding difficulty financing themselves. So we're finding a lot of very undervalued assets that we can invest in um, from many sources. But it's each individual project that we look at. In your career, you've established strong track records in both medicine and business. How do you combine the two in running Farsight? Uh, well, that's basically our USP. Uh, the understanding of the science and of the end user and also being able to put an innovative business financing and management story together is what enables you to do or enables us to do in Farsight what other companies can't really get into which is take a project from academia present it in such a way and develop it in such a way that we can make something commercial out of it in a relatively short period of time. Finally, when biotech companies strike it rich, they strike it really rich. But we hope so. How can you make yourself lucky? How can you re reduce the odds in your favour? Being careful, basically doing what other people don't do and going for projects where the perception of risk is greater than the reality of risk. And it's spotting that difference that I think gives us the edge. Erling Refsom, thank you very much. Thank you.